Hello again, Vince here, back with the cheapest Rolls Royce in the UK. And it's going to be very low on fuel because I bought it that way. And I wanted to put a little bit of fuel in it because I've been starting it up. This has been a bit of uh, an attraction. So I've, my dad's never had so many visitors until I got this car here. So it's been quite nice. It's been uh, quite social, which is great. But anyway, the fuel filler cap is not opening. So it's making the right sound on the inside. But even when I used a pull, it's got like a sort of an emergency pull cap in the uh, pull string thing in the boot as well. And that's not working. So watch this, you have a little button here that just says refuel, and listen. Makes the right noises, but yet, when we go over there, it's not open. Look, it's still shut here, yeah? And if we open up the boot, and pull this little thing here, again, it's making the right sounds, but nothing's happening here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the camera on a tripod and I am going to pull that and while prizing that open at the same time. If we can get it open, then hopefully it will be quite easy to fix because it sounds like the solenoid is working when you press the button, it's definitely making a noise. Again, I think it's just corrosion based. So uh, let's start with that. I don't know what else I'm going to do in this video. I'm not too sure yet, but I think this is going to be an easy fix, I'm hoping. So hopefully we can move on to something else afterwards. Right, so let's get the little pull cord here. Press it. Yep, there we go. Right. It's definitely releasing there. Look. So that's okay. So why is it not releasing? Is it to do with there's no not enough spring? First of all, let's get rid of all of this here around here, just in case that's kind of fouling it a bit. Right, all I've done is clean that out, and now let's see if it's going to release. No, still not releasing. So why is the spring, has the spring just gone weak, or is it just a little bit of a uh, little bit of corrosion? You can see, even with this catch pulled in here, it's still just staying shut. You know, it's not springing, it's not springing out. Hmm. Right, I can see right in here that there's Allen keys. It looks like there's a bolt at the top right, top left, and just one at the bottom. Let me see if I can undo them, because if I can take it out, I think corrosion's got to the bottom of that hinge, and it's uh, that's why the spring's not as strong as it should be. Right, I think this is easier said than done. I'm gonna get some WD-40 on the bolts. Hopefully that will loosen them up. The bottom one looks completely rusted. But I suppose we'll start with the rustiest one. Now annoyingly, the Allen keys don't fit when I put them in this way, these hex keys. So uh, I have to put it in the long way, but it means I'm not going to have much uh, leverage on it. But if I have it here, maybe I can grab it with some pliers. Right, that's in. Oh, that's done it. Amazing, that has actually done it. Result. 
So luckily, if the really rusty one undone that easy, then we shouldn't have any problem with the other two. Just using the same technique again, getting the extra leverage with the adjustable spanner. I used that instead of pliers just because it was to hand, and it works just as well. Uh, for one of them, I do have to undo the petrol cap just because it's fouling the Allen key itself when I'm undoing it. I'm a little bit wary about any debris falling into the petrol tank, so I just put a cloth in there just to stop that happening. Also, I have to be a little bit careful because obviously quite a strong smell of petrol vapour when you undo that cap there and that could ignite quite easily so I'm just a bit wary with the metal allen key against the metal work of the body here just to make sure that there's no sparks or anything uh, because then the car would go up in flames probably along with me as well so anyway you can see now we're just about to take this off and we can see the state of this hinge We got it. Now, is that it? Yes, it is. Amazing. Okay. Fantastic. We got it out. Right. Before we look at that, let's put the actual filler cap back in. Again, it needs a nice big clean up. Now, let's have a close look at this hinge. Right, let's have a look now. So you can see that the top side here is okay, but look how rusted that bottom side is. And you can see the spring in here. So I suppose what's happening is the spring isn't really doing, well, I mean, it's very powerful there, but I think all this corrosion here has made it, maybe even this, maybe this rubbing against this bit here has made it so, so it doesn't pop up when it's closed, you know? I mean, right now it's really, really, really uh, free. So I'm going to scrape all around here, get WD-40 in it, get rid of as much rust as I possibly can by scraping, and then we'll have to put a load of oil and grease on it. Good news is it's unleaded petrol that goes into it. So I've got, I haven't got to add any additives or anything like that. Yeah, I think it was here that was causing it. So if you have a look at the rust here, you can see that that's where it moves. So this bit doesn't move, but it moves against that there. I think it was these bits of rust here that was causing it just to stay in position. So yeah, good job we took this out. It'll give me an opportunity to put some rust eater on it as well that will hopefully seal it and then I can uh, spray up this bit. And the only thing worse than this hinge is my throat. So let's give a nice big coronavirus shout out to the My Movements Massive. And the members of the Massive consist of kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Lobok Auto Sales, DJVG, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbert, Pigsy, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Braden Butts from Connecticut, Kenneth Blundstrop Sorensen, Simba Tillaboo, Gabe McCandless, and Extrem 401. Massive apologies for the uh, croakiness. Right, so I've given it a bit of a clean up now. I'm going to use some of this on it Hammerite Crust. And uh, yeah, I think it's supposed to like seal the rust, stop it getting, going any worse. Well, I'm gonna have to get a little paintbrush.
Right, okay, so you can see that it looks nicer. Obviously the rust is still there. This still has no real strength to it, but at least this top section here is okay. So it's still gonna hang on with the top there anyway. I just need this bottom hinge to kind of stay intact from here down. Because if that breaks then, I presume it will just, yeah, will just flop around the place. So uh, anyway, I've got some hammer right here, direct to rust metal paint. So I'm just gonna just do a light dust in here. I'm not gonna be putting it anywhere near here anyway, or this bit. I'm just gonna literally just put a little bit around here. Right, I'm going to let that dry for a bit. Then once it's dry, we can put three in one oil where the washers and stuff are. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing in grease. Vincey made a boo-boo. So I was looking at an old can of tea cut that I had, I think from years and years ago. So it's probably 20 years old. And uh, I dropped it <laughs> and it just exploded. T-cut is what you use to restore paint, so I think it takes off like a top layer of paint. And it got me thinking, rather than just waste it, I've mopped up some with a uh, cloth. Try not to get too much grit in it. I'm going to polish up the petrol flap cover just to see if we can regain the shine again. Because we know that this car's been all sanded back and filled, but I wonder now, it's going to have lots of layers of paint on because there's a Rolls Royce, I wonder... Could you just take off the top layer of paint to get rid of all those scratches and get the brilliant shine again underneath that? That's what I'm going to try. Wow, I can actually see myself in it. Look. That's come out pretty good. Considering I've just given it a quick go and it hasn't been polished or anything or even washed. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a look at the bonnet. Maybe I'll try to do one side of the bonnet, see how it comes out. Imagine if I could get the paintwork back without having to have a respray. Right, so if any of you don't know what tea cut is, I've got to be careful now because this bottle is all shattered. It is this stuff here. But this is going to be quite an old bottle. So uh, yeah, the stuff in the shop might not look exactly like that, but it's the original colour restorer. It's been around for years and years. I'm going to try to do half the bonnet and see how it comes out. Oh dear God, I could cry but cry in a good way. So this is the half of the bonnet that I haven't done, but the other half wasn't dissimilar to this. Are you ready? Bearing in mind, I've only given it a quick go by hand. I haven't used any tools and I've got a polisher at home that was from a previous Fix It video that was owned by Ben. He sent it into the channel and it was just a fault on the actual switch. So imagine now if I use it with the actual polisher. Are you ready? I can't believe it. I can actually see reflections. Oh, oh my, my. Look how it's come out. I'm so happy with it. Obviously it needs another few going overs, but I've only been on that for about half an hour. I'm so happy with it. So basically you see all these things here. These are just from tiny little stone chips. So you can see one here, one here. Well, I would be happy just to fill them up with a little touch up, touch up and I've got to go around that again. But I suppose because there's so many layers of paint on this car, I don't know if it will need a respray. I'm wondering whether I'll be able to just take it back 
to that and then just deal with the areas of damage. So for example now here, that needs work. Do you know what? I know this sounds ridiculous. If I was to get the correct colour and if I was to paint it on, even just with a paintbrush, and then use wet and dry paper to get it all smooth, and then if there's any kind of like high spots, you know, well, make sure there's no high spots. I mean, this all feels perfectly flat. If I was to paint all this now, even with a paintbrush, and just wet and dry it down, and then polish it and polish it and polish it with the teacup, would you get an okay finish, or would it always look absolutely awful i'm not talking about a concourse thing of course not but would your eye be instantly drawn to it or would you get away with it if when you're flattening it back you have it all an even level and then polish it would that not be acceptable oh, look at that i'm so happy with it i think that's going to be my next video trying to tee cut the car back to then see what uh, see what we're left with well happy with that anyway let's get the petrol filler cap back on and see if it's working all right so let's add some oil to this hinge and i'm just going to work that in for a while well, it already feels really nice. And let's add a little bit of grease. Well, I think that's gonna work just fine now. So let's put it back on the car and see if it's operating from the little pull cord and also from the internal release. Now this is all gonna need painting as well, a bit of rust inhibitor first, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now because there's gonna be plenty of work to do on the bodywork later on. So I can do that then. Actually, while I'm here, I think I'm gonna put some grease in this mechanism here. So a little while down the line, when uh, I'm happy that the oil and grease is kind of sitting where it needs to be, then what I can do is I can clean it all up at a later stage, because for example, you won't need to have oil on the top nut there and stuff. So uh, yeah, I can worry about that another time. Now, let's get these bolts back in.
<laughs> I've closed it. All right, well, this is gonna be, it's not in yet. <laughs> I've closed it by accident. Let me pull the, the boot one. It might not because the cloth's in there. Oh, yes. Excellent. There we go. Right, let's see now. Well, lining wise, I think it looks okay. I think that looks the same as it did, uh, same as it before. Just a little bit shinier. Right, let's uh, pull the boot. Ah, now that's good. Right, and let's uh, go into the car and see what's happening. So here we go. Fill it up, please. Keep the change. <laughs> Sounds different. I know it's opened. Now, come around here. Ta da! Fantastic. Just need to wipe up the tea cut here. Oh, I'm so happy with that. And let's just do it one more time for. Uh, luck there we have it excellent so it was just corrosion on that uh, on that hinge there so a nice little repair I'm glad I took it out because it allowed me to you know properly give it a good clean and scrape up while if I just sprayed WD-40 in there maybe it would just get blocked up again in the in a few weeks or possibly months so I'm really really happy with that today not really because of the fix here because of the actual way the paints come out Compare that to that side there. I know it needs lots more work, but look, look at all the scratches there. That's what this side was like. And just from half an hour's work, it's come up like that. Doesn't that look lovely looking at the spirit of ecstasy on a, bot on a bonnet that's gleaming? Oh, I'm so, so happy. Right, that's gonna be my next video. I think trying to get rid of all this, uh, all this stuff here and seeing what it comes out like afterwards and trying to get this boot and stuff back again. Because look at all the scrapes on it. I don't know if that's coming across on the camera. Let me go this side here. Can you see how scraped up it is? The whole thing is just scratches. Well, 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 well happy with that. Now, I was contemplating putting this on to another video, but I don't really think it warrants its own video, so I'm gonna tag it on to the end of this one. I'm gonna start cleaning the engine bay. Now, this definitely has leaks because I can see little drips forming underneath the car, and I was told when I bought it that uh, it was leaking hydraulic oil and also, I'm not sure if it's engine oil, but it's leaking various different things underneath. Now, the problem is the engine's got so much gunk and everything everywhere that I can't really find out where anything is leaking. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get a load of wet wipes and I'm going to start wiping up. I've already done it here because I wanted to see what this hydraulic thing was going on here. This was basically caked. Everything around here just had like a furry, oily mess everywhere. And uh, I've just, you know, wiped up that there. But you can see everything just has a, a layer everywhere of just uh, oil grease and grime so i'm hoping if i can get it cleaner then i might be able to see where water's leaking or oil's leaking or hydraulic fluid is leaking i think it will give me a, a better chance so i might as well film it now you can get this like engine gunk stuff that you're supposed to paint on and then wash off the problem is i don't really want water anywhere near here because if i start getting water in the electrics and stuff then i'm going to have a whole heap of problems so i know it's going to take a lot longer but i'm just going to get a pack of wet wipes and then I'm just going to use all the wet wipes on it and things like cloths and stuff like that just to try to uh, get some of the grease. It's not going to look amazing afterwards, but if I can just clean up, for example, where all the, you know, down here and stuff, I don't know if that's leaking or what's happening. So if I can clean up all the way under there, then hopefully I can find out what uh, the state off the engine and all the hoses and stuff. So let me get the tripod set up and uh, this is just really going to be kind of fast forwarded through with music but you might find it relaxing, it might be enjoyable seeing it get cleaned bit by bit.
than all the rest. I'm quite old fashioned, wear a hat, sometimes play chess. And when I. Right, looking at this thing here that goes down to the air filter, it's lovely. It's all made out of metal, and uh, yeah, this just looks really nice against it, but it's kind of got oxidized over the years. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just going to rub it around this bit here just to bring that nice silver tone back. That certainly looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? Just to say that obviously keys are out of the ignition, they're in my pocket so there's no danger of starting the car and also I've turned the battery kill switch in the boot. Now the good thing about doing this is I can start to understand it more. So for example now, check out this mechanism down here. When I push this down here, look at the, uh, look at the mechanism here. So I presume that is all to do with the accelerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply uh, grease to all the pivot points there, make them nice and smooth. This must be for the bonnet catch, going all the way across here to here, which corresponds to here and up there. Look at what I found down here, the coil. So obviously this is before you had coil packs and stuff, this is the coil and uh, so there has to be a distributor. So from, we've got obviously eight cylinders, so there's one spark plug lead there, HT lead, high tension lead, there, there and there. So there has to be a distributor somewhere. There it is. Just just seen it in here. There it is in there, look. Massive thing. Let me get a torch. There you go. So you're going to have the lead from the coil from memory. The lead from the coil will be going, this lead here will be going into the middle there and then it gets uh, into the top middle and then it will get distributed to all the other eight leads that will go to feed each spark plug so basically the spark plugs are underneath these leads here you see in each cylinder of the engine so uh, yeah that's uh, that's useful so hopefully now bit by bit by cleaning it i'll actually start to maybe understand a little bit more about uh, the workings of this engine check out what i got as well from the uh, advice in the comments i've got some lithium grease but what i did is i got the wd-40 stuff here look white lithium grease so this is what i'm going to put on all those linkages there. Hold on a minute, slightly excited. Basically, when I bought the car and I went for the test drive, 
I said, see if kick down works, but I didn't know whether this had kick down and I got him to floor it and nothing happens. Now check this out. When I do this here, this uh, linkage here and go down, you can see it's all moving, yeah? But I was wondering what does this thing do here? Now watch, when I go more, so hold on, press down. Now watch, when I go more, boom, you see there? It opens up something, uh, it opens up something else, doesn't it? I wonder, is that kick down? Now I'm not 100% sure if that was uh, doing it before I started greasing it up. I'm gonna grease it here as well, it probably was. Maybe it was in the wrong speed to kick down, because I think this thing only has three gears. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my dad to sit in and completely floor it. I wanna see if when you uh, floor it, whether that, you know, from there to there, I wanna see if it does this thing there. Right, no, it's not, uh, it's not kick down. I'll show you kick down in a minute. So if you could, Dad, if you could just press it now. So what happens is you go to there and then that bit goes further, yeah? So I think it must be just under more acceleration. It must change the air fuel mixture or something. Maybe make it more rich when you're really flooring it. I'm not sure, I'll let more air in, I don't know. But anyway, let me show you the little, it looks like there's a button under the accelerator for kick down. So kick down must be more an electrical thing. Now, if you have a look here underneath the uh, non-standard carpet, so obviously this is the accelerator. It's nice, the accelerator's all metal. Hold on a minute, is that? Oh no, that's not the brake, isn't But if you have a look here, can you see there's a little physical button just here? So you can see the button just there. So it must be an electrical thing. I'm not saying it doesn't work, it's just that we needed it, it didn't work, but maybe it only works at certain speeds. Right, maybe if you're already doing, I don't know, maybe if you're already in sort of second gear and you're doing like 40, it's not going to kick down to first gear, not too sure. Also, this here has been changed and uh, they've left it too tall. So what, what happens is this top cover now rocks around the place and can you see it's starting to leave a groove around here. So I'm going to have to cut that down. I'll probably bring the Dremel tool, it'd be nice and easy to do that with the Dremel rather than trying to get a hacksaw in there. Now I have to say this is just like an initial clean because obviously I need to do work on it so uh, it's going to be getting dirty again but if I can just clean it up enough to make it nicer to work on, see what's happening and then at the end I can give it like a really good clean if I, uh, if I get it working. you know what I've just had a thought maybe because this has been messed around with it hasn't been put back together correctly and that's the reason why the wipers haven't got the full range of movement maybe there's too much play in it here that could be what's wrong interestingly I did find this in the engine compartment when I was looking earlier this thing here so maybe because it was underneath there somewhere maybe this has to go in there and uh, yeah I think now because it's been tampered with probably put well definitely put together incorrectly that's the reason the cover was missing that's the reason we haven't got the full range of movement on the wipers that I was asking about in another episode be lovely if I get it all working to then get a wire brush scrape all this back here and paint up the rocker cover and again have the Rolls Royce sanded back just like this here
Oh, look at that, it's labelled up here. Starter, starter inhibits, kick down. Oh, kick down. So we have got a thing for kick down there. Wiper one, wiper two, wiper three. Must be the three different speeds, like intermittent, slow and fast. Fuel pump when fitted, air injection when fitted. Hmm, okay, that's good. Right now there's loads of uh, leaves and everything down here. So let's get rid of all them. See, it's important to clear here because these are all blocked up, but this is where water goes through. There's a hole here. There's also a hole here. So when water gets in here, it needs to be able to drain away. Look at this. A couple off. Oh, I was going to say they're tyre valves. I don't know what they are. I'm not sure. They're not tyre valves. I don't know what they're for. Anyway, I'll keep them. Hopefully they'll it'll become clear later on in the series. Wow, I think I found one of those green balls, you know, that they use for the hydraulics or I think the braking and the hydraulics are linked on this car here. But look at this. Do you see this horrible thing here? You can see the green there. See? So, and it's covered, absolutely covered everywhere in gunk. So this is great, you see. So now when I clean this all up, I might see it weeping from there. To be fair, that one looks quite accessible. We've just got to be really careful because I believe it's all under so much pressure. Like a dangerous amount of pressure. Is it 2000 PSI or something ridiculous? So uh, yeah, I've got to read all up about that. The problem is I'm struggling to get any real information about it. I mean, workshop manual is written for kind of professionals, of which I am not. So even with this here, I need to find like a YouTube video or something that's like a how to how to top it up because looking at these bits here it's saying that this is full and this you need to add 500 millilitres so uh, if you have a look here I can see on this one I can see a tiny bit of green so this looks like maybe you know like a pint or so might fill it up but this one over here I can't see any green whatsoever and I presume that's why the mineral light is on on the dashboard but I don't know how to undo these it looks like we have a safety tag here you know like a do not tamper tag I'm thinking this whole thing unscrews but I presume that's where all the pressure is kept don't know though because when it comes to things like this this is actually loose this one here and this one here so uh, yeah I don't really know if anybody's got any good videos that they can point me in the direction off I'd like that because obviously I don't want that to explode in my face and kill me check out the engine oil here goes in there really enjoying this right on this one here it says engine cooling fans air horn when fitted and standard horn now uh, the middle one is completely empty but I have got a relay for the horn my horns on this are completely missing it's supposed to be a high and a low horn on it so I've ordered up some Lucas parts which will hopefully be quite original to the car okay so I'm going to call it a day for today now I'll probably put about four hours or so into that uh, it looks like it doesn't look a huge amount different but i have got lots and lots of wet wipes that came out of it so overall i've just given things a nice good wipe i've still got loads more to do but bit by bit i'm learning a little bit more about the car so it looks like all the green pipes are to do with hydraulics which is good or braking uh, hydraulics and braking 
so uh, yeah and now you see I'll be able to trace from the air conditioner uh, air condition compressor thing back and so I can find out what pipes had to do with the air conditioning and stuff see I'm not overly bothered about air conditioning that's not going to you know fail MOTs and stuff like that so uh, yeah but it is starting to look a lot nicer obviously I've got to get underneath the car and uh, give it all a wipe underneath hopefully then I'll be able to find where things are leaking because right now I can't find anything leaking and I know I'm kind of high up in the car but it all feels very very solid I can't see any accident damage or anything anywhere cross members all look good so yeah I'm really uh, really happy with it I see a massive heat sink here so I presume that is something to do with uh, EC, ECU or something like that I'm thinking there must be a cover that goes over this area here because I don't think these would just be exposed like that but even these are all labelled up which is nice so uh, yeah I'm really happy with it because I've learned a lot I just need to work out what's happening here because I really want to fill up the mineral oil because maybe when it's full that's when the leak will appear so what I'm going to do now is just to make sure that I haven't wiggled any electrical connection out of the way because there's lots of kind of just random electrical connections around the place i'm going to just jump in the car see if it still starts and then uh, we can pack up for the evening i love the sound of this when it starts please still start oh i've got the battery kill switch worried there There we go, that's on now. Here it goes. Come on now. Ah, well that's good news so i'm going to attack it again maybe tomorrow or the next day and hopefully finish off the compartment engine compartment and also go underneath clean everything and then uh, yeah bit by bit we were uh, we will slowly get there now that brings me nicely to the end of this episode here and i will pick up the cleaning of the engine bay and underneath in another episode might be a dedicated episode or i might just tag it on like i did in this one to an end of uh, maybe a simpler fix so i'd like to end with a little quote i've never heard this quote before until i started doing these videos and tony p mentioned it to me via my patreon and also i think a couple of other people mentioned it in one of the introduction videos or maybe part one or something but it was a, a quote from desmond tutu and it's there's only one way to eat an elephant a bite at a time now you might think what's that got to do with cars but obviously if i think about the whole rolls royce it would be a little bit daunting a bit intimidating but you see if you just do one little task at a time then it's manageable so right now i'm not thinking oh no the hydraulic fluid's leaking I'm thinking, let's get the engine bay clean so I might be able to then see where the hydraulic fluid is leaking. Because sometimes if you look at the bigger picture, you get a little bit scared. So, uh, yeah, you can remind me of this thing here in uh, a couple of months' time when there's some internal leak somewhere on the hydraulic system and I can't find it and I've stripped everything out and I'm pulling my hair out and I can't get parts. <laughs> but anyway, right now, I like that quote. So that is it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up and I will hopefully see you all very soon. Take care.